All right, before we get started, this is Roger from Mount Fossil University. I want to just let you know, this is not something that I just started figuring out yesterday. I've been doing this a very, very long time and working on, on and on and on. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So what I'm getting at is I was working on my atomic theories for my whole life and no way to prove them until I ran, ran into Rodney Warren. Then we saw this. All right, everything you see there and everything you see anywhere is the result of only two particles. I say these are the only two particles that exist in the universe anywhere. And everything there is consists and is constructed of, 100% of everything is of these two particles. One of them is an electron one of them is a positron. All right, what is a positron? A positron is exactly identical to an electron. Identical, it's only it spins in the reverse direction. An electron spins down towards the Earth to suck to the Earth, which is a positive attractive source. All electrons try to get there. Electricity, zzz, lightning, pan, light, poom, static, poom instantaneous acceptance of electrons because Earth is a positive source. Now, that leaves us a whole different thing. Anything we can make turn positive in its totality against the Earth will go up. That's why hydrogen does. It does not have enough electrons. All right, this is as close to quantum as you're going to get as, as an analogy, okay? Here he's got these See what's happening? Those, watch. All right, you see it? He's moving around. These are the electrons in their orbitals, and that is the electron flooded core. Now, in the beginning, he shows how he makes this. All right, what he does is he takes a core of bronze or brass. And these are negative particles which surround the positive core, which is electron flooding. Now, when he puts that over here, let's see. All right, he's gonna, here's what's going to happen. This is an electron. It wants to get to that positive core. But these flooded electrons, and it, in, a, in, in our world, they're round like this. The whole thing's round. And the positiveness is internal. The negativeness surrounds it. So no particle that is negative can attach. And here's what happens. Boom. You see this? Now those little tiny particles before, these little balls like he was showing before, they don't hold well. But the, in, in the real world, they're going to hold like crazy because they have a distance that they're going to be identical to what he's got there. He could shake and do all these kind of things. And it will, it'll, it'll be there and it'll shake. And that is when you start getting heat, friction, friction like this. Because every single particle that you touch is negative. Every single particle on you is negative. Every single surface is negative. Inside, in the core, is the positives, yes. But we're dealing with negative to negative. If I take this and I rub it to that, there's two negatives touching each other. Two negatives touch each other. Touching, touching, negatives everywhere. Negatives, negatives, negatives. There is no positive surface that exists. Until you go into nuclear radiation, then you can break off the positives from the negatives. And I think we actually did that, accidentally, Rodney did, in one of the experiments. We'll talk about that later. But what happens here is this is heat. He's creating heat now. That's heat. Because we're forcing electrons in and they're all shaking like crazy. And then all of a sudden it'll take off and go flying out of there. And because one of them hit it and replaced it and drove it out of there. And that is what's called light. All right. Now, let's look into uh, some more of this. All right. So let's take it one step at a time. This is pulsed red laser light. And it's from the red laser. I got one right here. From this red laser right here. All right. 
and you pip, 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 and then of course it bounces back and you receive it. This is a construction laser, laser, nothing fancy. This picture was taken with a cell phone cam, and it's a specific type of, of pixels and it's a specific type of camera that Rodney had because I could never get to, to do it. And then just recently he, he explained to me, no, 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 you have to have this certain type of camera. <laughs> so, uh, and I have one now and I'll be experimenting with it anyway. This is what you see is, is the pulse red laser is invading everywhere and it is causing the entire regions here to concuss which makes these little particles up here display not brilliantly but they are now saying woo, 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 woo. they're kicking out a, a, a little bit of energy because they're being smashed because this is forcing everybody that one particle that exists right in the center owns this entire ball and everybody in its wake has to get out of the way. One tiny particle. And I'll show you the proof of that. Because here's what happens when it approaches Rodney's Venturi. Like I said, just a, just a, a twist of fate. He used two nails. A round nail here and a round nail here. Shot the laser into it. And when it happened, the airplane wing effect, which is nothing more than a powerful Venturi, forced the particle, first of all, to accelerate, which made it ex expose itself as a particle. Oops. All right, it made it expose itself as a particle. See that? That whole region is being perturbed because of that little bugger right there. And by the time it gets to here, it is so stacked up because these balls are like these just gigantic beach balls. They're coming and it's and then it says, "Well, I got to go through there." Well, we got a problem because we don't fit too good together. So here's what happens: it turns into plasma, and I had the hell of a time understanding how. A, and I'll show you the particle that turns into it. It's it's black and white. So I said, "How could this possibly be turned into completely white?" lost all the blackness but then it shows up again and I think I figured out why and we're going to talk about that in a second but as it comes through the Venturi we've got accelerate well, first of all we've got a particle we've got acceleration we have the Cheryankov which is the white that's the high energy particle we have this spray of particles you see it they call that the interference pattern. And the reason they call it interference pattern because they think it's a wave like this that comes through and, and it hits that and it, and it interferes with each other's waves as it comes out. Not that at all. This interference pattern is created by the negativeness of these particles wanting to be away from each other. They never wanted to be in each other's faces. And they were forced to, in the Venturi, to accelerate and crush into each other's regions, causing plasma, which may be able to be used with fusion if this was done with heavy particles. Now, because we're using light, we're not having fusion, but I'm going to tell you right now, that is plasma. And if you have plasma with heavy particles, you should be able to create fusion. Because they're supposed to, if you get plasma and all the particles are in disarray, and when they come back together, they step down into helium instead of heavy hydrogens, you end up with a lot of extra energy. And that could be done, and I think this will do fusion. Obviously, I can't do it. Now, this is where the particles start to step down, and then we will see them turn into what's called bosons. And a boson is nothing more than one of these particles that is going so fast that everything outside of it can't react. It's just, and it's gone. So it's just like it was here and it's gone. Nobody even knew it was here. Well, that's the case. And then it smashes into the regions of space where it's, it's slowing down enough to everybody else can react at the same time. And that's where we're going next. 
Okay, what I want you to remember, don't forget, these are spinning particles, and those are thro spinning. T -t 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 -t. If it spins the other way around, it's turning into itself, and and that's what that one did. I believe it's a reverse spinner, and it acted very strangely. Right, that's what that particle ended up doing. That's that white particle concussing with one of these normal fields, creating. It, it looks like it's cascading into its own field. I, I don't know what else to say about that. Another fabulous shot Rod took. This is light spinning. That's what it does. It spins. And it's spinning all over the place here. So, so one of them might hit way out here and it goes this way. One of them might be over here and it goes up under that way. You can see that is a drill bit. It's screwing through the slip. Very, very obvious. That's what creates these interference patterns. All right, that is the spinning particle, zzzz, just like that, and it's open here and compressed up here, obviously slowing down. These are the surrounded particles that are chasing this. This is the one that has all the power. These are concussing as they are chasing this to try to catch it as it spins. That creates the Higgs fields. All right, this is coming right out of the accelerator. You end up with these two particles, and then they step down. Those two particles, in my world, they're both bar magnets, one on each side, and they stack together there. That's an electron on each side. No positrons here, only electrons. And then when they concuss with the rest of matter, they add into that matter and become electrons. Here they're photons attached back to back. In my world, that is the step down from the, the, the back to back phase as they turn into plasma. Now they're all just floating around and what came out of here, they're spinning now like this so fast they can't interact. Then they begin to interact creating these fields. They are now electrons. At this point they are adding to the electron mass before they were photons, which were particles of light just pushing through the air and doing whatever they do. But now they have become electrons. That's the step down. You saw those other fields. Here they are right here. This is the step down of light coming through water molecules, turning into electrons. It appears in, in the chaos of the Venturi, it is literally 100% concussed energy. And then out here, they start to reattach as photon type particles. It appears, I really don't know to be perfectly honest with you. All I can see is that we've got black starting to reappear, and we have absolutely nothing here. Started with a red laser pulse going through, right through the air. That's just right in the air. Then it went through the Venturi. You can see it accelerated. You can see it was a particle. It owned a huge region. You can see that it concussed and turned white. And then we got the interference patterns, the Cheryankov interference patterns. Then you can see that as it came out, it presented the Higgs fields after being the bosons, spinning particles that were so fast in the bosons. Then um, I also showed that it spins, it's the light is a spinning particle. And here's what happened after it made all of its complete whiteness and came out the other side eventually it reconstituted into its normal light patterns. Now my contention is it started out as a photon which was as I showed back to back basically back to back bar magnets just like that and they just go flying through space pushing everybody out of the way well when they went through the accelerator they just started to go all into their own craziness and turned white because they were now displaying what light does. It concusses and turns white or whatever color comes from the impact. 
So that's what we saw. Light doing what it does. Concussing. Then, out the other side of the venturi, we saw the particles separated, spinning, a single particles spinning like this, creating those huge fields surrounding them because you're going every time a positive comes next to an electron which is attached to a water it pulses it and that's why you get those patterns that I showed and then they end up coming back to the bar magnet phase where they are red light again all right so as far as I can see that's the entire cycle of starting from photons which are back-to-back electrons and then they became electrons and then we could see them reattach and become black and white black and white and then display their red particle nature it's the best I can do if um, anybody wants to get a hold of me it's Roger R-O-G-E-R at mudfossils.com all right thank you